Welcome back, everyone. Uh, what I want to do next is talk about an alternative model to the natural growth uh, we saw in the previous video here. Now, as a model of population growth, natural growth is typically good only for a short amount of time. That is, that equation P equals P naught E to the KT. This works really only well when you don't have a really long time period. So for short intervals, this is going to make a very good assumption. So why does this why does this law of uninhibited growth not work in the grand scheme of things? Why does it become unrealistic over a long uh, time period? Well, that's because it's based upon only one assumption. The bigger we are, the faster we grow. There are additional factors that could affect the population's growth, such as space restrictions um, or maybe limited amounts of food, uh, predators, uh, immigration there there's a lot of other things that could be affecting the population here and so we'll, we'll, let's take the idea of scarcity of resources what if there is some type of scarcity you can't necessarily have infinite uh resources right we can't just open up our game and type in like uh, show me the money or glittering prizes or any other cheat code like that what if our population has a certain carrying capacity there's a maximum population for which that the ecosystem can support. And beyond that, it doesn't work. So what if you have this maximum population M? What would happen in such a situation like that? Well, what we can do is we can create a growth model that has this uh, maximum population built into it. Let us take the assumption, let's take the assumption that the more space, or the so to speak, uh, the more elbow room one has, the more elbow room, the more elbow room, the faster growth. So what do I mean by elbow room right here? Well, imagine you are gonna go watch a movie in a theater or you wanna go out to dinner at a restaurant. Well, when you go to these attractions, if you're the first one there, it's like, hey, I can sit anywhere I want, wonderful. But then when the next party comes, they're gonna kinda sit, but they're not gonna sit right next to you, they're gonna go sit somewhere else. And then the third party's gonna sit somewhere else, and there, and there, and there, and there. And so as the theater or the restaurant starts filling up, all the chairs start getting filled, all the tables start getting filled, uh, people are gonna start to not want to go there anymore. It's like, hey, that restaurant looks kinda busy right now. Maybe we should go to the movies. Or it's like, hey, this movie theater is kind of full. Maybe let's, let's just refund our tickets and let's go to a restaurant instead. If there's no room, uh, if there's no room in the in the theater, people aren't going to be able to come into it. And people's willingness to expand in the theater has a lot to do with how much space is there left. So when there's a lot of elbow room, and so by elbow room, I mean take the maximum population, subtract the current population. This is what we mean by elbow room. If there's a lot of elbow room, we're gonna grow rapidly. And then as things get closer and closer and closer to the maximum population, the growth will tend to slow down, down and down and down. So what we're saying here is what if the growth rate P prime is proportional to the elbow room? Things grow fast when there's a lot of elbow room and things will grow slowly when there's not a lot of elbow room. Well, clearing the denominator, we get the following equation right here. Uh, P prime equals K times M minus P. And this gives us the law of inhibited growth. In this growth model, we have built into it the fact that the more we have, the slower it grows. There'll be a quick explosion of growth at the very beginning, uh, but then it slows down over time. All right. And so... Just like with our law of uninhibited growth, um, K is our growth factor. When it's positive, this is going to be a growth model. And when it's negative, this would represent some type of decay. Like so. And so, for the most part, we're going to make some assumptions that K is always going to be a positive number and that P is going to be less, uh, P is going to be less than M. That is, there is some room to grow. Because if we actually had P larger than M, even with a positive growth model, things would decay because there's not enough, there's not enough space to support all of these things. So with this differential equation in hand, how does one solve this to give us, uh, well, give us a general, a, a general form, a, a general equation to work with here? 
Now this right here is a separable differential equation. We could try to separate the variables to help us out here. So I would begin by timesing both sides of the equation by dt. And we're also going to divide both sides by m minus p. So they cancel over here and m minus p over there. So doing that, we're going to get dp over m minus p. This is equal to uh, k dt. And now we want to integrate these things with respect to the variables on the two sides. The right-hand side is going to be fairly straightforward. This is just going to be t plus a constant, sorry, kt times a constant. On the, on the left-hand side, in order to integrate with respect to p, I'm going to do a quick u substitution, u equals m minus p, therefore du equals negative dp. So we need a double negative to correct that. Uh, then the left-hand side would look like negative the integral of du over u. This becomes the negative natural log of the absolute value of u, like so. And then replacing u with its value, we end up with negative the natural log of the absolute value of m minus p. Now, because we're assuming that p is always less than m, this actually does mean that m minus p is always going to be a positive number. So it turns out we don't actually need the absolute values here. Uh, parenthesis is sufficient in this case. So we have this negative natural log of m minus p equals kt plus c. Uh, so let's times both sides by negative 1. We get the natural log of m minus p. This is equal to negative kt plus a constant. Now notice here we times c by a negative 1 as it's a gelatinous cube. It just absorbs the negative sign. Makes no difference whatsoever. Um, exponentiate both sides. We're going to get m minus p is equal to uh, e raised to the negative kt plus c. And like we've seen before, the plus c in the exponent can actually come out in, as a c e to the negative xt. That's the magic of the gelatinous cube right there. All right, and then let's see. We're going to add p to both sides. So to the cancel, add p. Um, we're also going to subtract c e to the negative kt on both sides. And when we do so, we will end up with the following equation we have right here. The population will equal the maximum population. So P is the current population at a specific moment of time. So the current population will be the maximum population minus some constant multiple of E to the negative KT, where that K is the same uh, growth constant we saw in the original differential equation. What can we say about this number C right here? Well, let's plug in the initial value, p of 0 equals p naught. Well, if you do that, you're going to get p of 0. This is equal to p naught, like we said. And then you're going to get m minus c e to the negative k times 0. Well, k times 0 is going to be 0. You get e to the 0. And so you're going to get m minus c. This is equal to p naught. Uh, if we subtract c from both sides, sorry, add c to both sides, we're going to add c and we're going to subtract p naught. Uh, subtract p naught there. We end up with this equation right here, c equals m minus p naught. So this right here gives us our uh, an equation for the law of, un uh, of inhibited growth, where c there is measuring the difference between the maximum population and the initial population. So this is what I like to think as the initial, the initial elbow room is what this number is computing. All right. Now this, uh, this formula, some of you might have seen before. Uh, this model has built into it the idea that as you get closer and closer and closer to this threshold value, m, the, 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 the spread, the grow will, will, will shrink over time, right? This is actually a really good model, for example, when one talks about uh, Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling. Uh, in that context, if you've seen this before, you take m to be the, the temperature of the environment you're taking. So if you take like a really hot, a cup of chocolate and you put it in the refrigerator, uh, the, the population could be its temperature, which when you put it inside the refrigerator, it can't get colder than the refrigerator it's in. And you'll see that this, this uh, 
this will cool, it'll start to, its temperature will decay closer and closer and closer and closer towards the temperature of the refrigerator. If it's really hot, at first there'll be a rapid decay of, of cooling, but as it gets closer and closer and closer to the temperature of the environment, it'll slow down dramatically. Uh, let's take a look at an example using actual populations here. Uh, suppose a certain nature reserve can support no more than 4,000 mountain goats. So this is going to represent a maximal population here. So the reserve can only support 4,000 mountain goats. Assume that the rate of growth is proportional to how close the population is to the maximum. That here sounds like inhibited growth, like Newton's law of cooling. The growth is proportional to this maximum population, or I should say it's proportional to the elbow room, with a growth rate of 20%. So what this is telling us is with respect to inhibited growth, our K value is going to equal 20%, aka 0.2, like so. So we want to write a differential equation for the rate of the growth of this population and solve it. So in terms of the differential equation, we're going to get that P prime is equal to 0.2 times 4,000 minus P. So remember here that this M minus P is the maximum population minus the current population, and this was our growth factor of 0.2. So we get that pretty quickly. Um, by solving the differential equation, we're gonna get, and we don't necessarily have to go through the solution again. The solution will be identical to the separation of variables we did earlier. We're going to get that P is equal to the maximum population, 4,000, minus C. C was, uh, recall, the initial elbow room. C equals the maximum minus the initial. And so this is going to go 4,000 minus, I guess I never actually said what the current population is. It says there are currently 1,000 goats in the, in the reserve. So we take 4,000, take away 1,000. So that's going to be 3,000. This is the initial elbow room. The goats start off with a lot of potential to grow. You're going to have 4,000 minus 3,000 times e to the negative 0.2t. And so this right here gives us a model for the growth of this goat population, assuming they grow uh, by the assumptions of uninhibited growth. So what will the target goat population be in five years? So if our t value, if they're growing 20% per year, uh, the growth, we just have to look at p of five, P of five right here, in which case you get 4,000 minus 3,000 times E to the negative 0 0.2 times five. That's all there is to that. In which case 0 0.5 times, sorry, 0 0.2 times five is one. So you're gonna get 4,000 minus 3,000 uh, times E to the negative one or one over E if you prefer. And so we're gonna have to estimate this. Use a calculator to help you out here. No one has to be a hero. And you're going to get an estimate of 2,896.4. Now, of course, you can't have 0.4 of a goat. So we'd have to round, right? I mean, you could round, you could round, say, to just uh, 2,896. That's sort of like the nearest goat there. But one thing we should remember about, about models is that these are only estimates. They're only predictions. We don't expect these things to be perfect. And therefore... Um, actually, it's it would be quite natural to be like, just round this to 2,900. Now, be aware, if you're working on a homework question, it might ask you to round to the nearest whole number. Follow the instructions there. But in practice, we might not be like, oh, yeah, there's going to be 2,896 goats. And after five years, we'd be like, oh, yeah, there'll be about 2,900 goats. We, we, as human beings, we like rounded numbers. So rounding to 2,900 is pretty nice. We could even round to 3,000, and we'd be pretty happy with such a thing.